This is Pepper Pace and I am back again with another boxing. This time it is a full body silicone little baby girl. Um, this is Kit and here is her COA. She is uh, sculpted by Jennifer Sussman Price of Silicone Studio. Um, I think I got it studio, Silicone Studio instead of Silicone Studio 2. I don't know which one, I can't remember, I'm sorry. But this is number 75 open edition. And her mommy has purchased her. So we are going to get her boxed up. Now, her mom is still paying for her, so she's not ready to go off yet. But I am now in the process of getting babies ready to go home because I will be on vacation beginning uh, the middle of July and I'll be gone for two weeks and when I return I don't want there to be like babies paid off and I'm too busy to <laughs> you know get them prepped and ready to go. And it does take me a very long time to prep our little babies, um, which I actually enjoy prepping them, but um, we're gonna powder her first. So that's just me getting her, her little clothes together and making sure she's all bathed and clean and nice. And So I'm using um, this talc-free powder um, is from era organics uh, so it's just like a little dusting powder and i'm using this little brush to apply it and i'm using this just kind of this little tray here so because that's a lot of powder to dust on a little teeny premature baby like uh, this one now her mom has already named her. So she is Annie Blossom. Isn't that the cutest name for a cute little baby girl? Annie Blossom. And she turned out so beautifully. So Annie is one of several kits that I've received from Silicone Studio 2. I've done the Billy kit and I actually got two Billy kits so I've already completed one. I have another one that's a partial but forgive me I cannot remember the name of that kit. I don't know why I always have problems remembering the name of that particular kit but uh, I am so prepared to paint her okay and then we have little Miss Kit here let's get her turned over you don't have to do this part in other words you don't have to um, dust your baby unless you see some shine unless you just kind of want to. Annie doesn't have any Blossom. I like saying that name. She does not have any shine on her because I don't really handle her. Um, when I don't purchase the dolls for myself, I very seldom handle them. So I have my own dolls to handle. <laughs> And I kind of want to preserve all of that for the new mama or daddy. Okay. Also, I recently got started getting these little towels. 
they're lint free towels because um, another thing that a silicone baby will do is collect so much lint. So we are going to put her diaper on so we can just kind of preserve little baby girl's modesty. And we're gonna get her dressed and ready to pack up for mom. This is a preemie size diaper. And the thing about preemie size diapers is that um, even for little Annie, it still could be smaller. Annie got some little legs. So I bring it up high in the back so that we can get a good view of her belly button. So I think she's got the cutest little belly button. So we gonna expose that little belly button. There we go. And now little Annie is all dressed. So when I bathed her, I bathed her in Johnson & Johnson, uh, which is a baby shampoo and a baby wash. Make sure I don't have any. My hands are dry. Oh, you don't want to have any oils. So we're going to, uh, let's use this one. I was using a different, a boppy that was huge for a little preemie sized baby. Let me give you Annie's stats, Annie Blossom stats. I like saying Annie Blossom. <laughs> All right, so here, so each uh, time I, you know, create a baby, I will give them this little fact sheet um, and then some general care instructions. So we're doing part one. I should have said that in the very beginning. We're doing part one of this boxing where we're just getting her prepped and ready to go. Part two will happen after mommy has received the baby. So you do not have to worry. I know that her mommy is um, a viewer. So you don't have to worry. I'm not going to show any surprises of the box opening, which is a very nice box opening. Okay. So first thing is Annie Blossom is 17.5 inches and she weighs five pounds and 13 ounces. Um, so she is the kit full body silicone doll. And I think she's absolutely gorgeous guys. Okay. So we're gonna get her dressed. I'm putting her in the outfit that she came to me in, which is this little blessed outfit. Actually, I, I rewashed it. And these little short pants, which I've never seen these little short pants before. And then this little hat, this little baby cap. So let's get her ready to go. We're gonna start with the short pants. So uh, this is, again, a preemie size baby. And I know, I am aware, preemie sizes are super hard to find um, in clothing. So here's my suggestion. Go to Once Upon a Child. Go to like a consignment shop don't spend a whole lot of money on a lot of very expensive clothing because you will f i hit once upon a child and did a shopping haul one day i'll do it again and i will um show you some of the things that i purchased bunch of shoes yeah shoes for like less than a buck and like when i'm talking about baby shoes where it's not like the sole or the bottom of the shoe has never even hit the floor. Oh, uh, look at that. Her little belly is still showing. But look at her little short legs <laughs> compared to her little long body. Okay, so we got this on. Ah, the head. All right, you know we're not going to put this head first because... We don't want to pull out any stray hairs. If you were to do this, put the shirt on head first, you would just want to remember to put on a cap or something like that so that you don't disturb 
the uh, rooted hair. The rooted hair really does get stuck into the silicone. In other words, um, once the rooting needle pushes the, the hair into it, it does capture that hair, especially if you root a certain way where it becomes more difficult for the hair to pull out. So now what do you do if you have synthetic hair? Um, you know, I can't really say. I can say that the rooted hair that I put in, it goes in very far and it doesn't come out easily, but it will come out uh, when you repeatedly comb and handle it and brush it. And like what I'm doing right here, laying this little baby up and down and moving her around. So you will always see me a lot of times in my videos where the baby has a sleep cap on, a little bonnet, or I like to keep their hats on and people really want to see their hair and I'll just like, you know, take it off for that purpose. Annie also has this little bracelet uh, that I made that says Annie B. So we're going to be careful with that because I don't really want to keep taking it off and putting it on. Because it's super tiny and I got nails and it's hard to um, be hitting that clasp when you have nails. What I'm doing is I'm guiding her hand, as I've said so many times in other videos, but I am not pulling her limb. I'm trying to guide it in. There we go. And we have little Annie all dressed. I decided that we can see Annie a lot better if we place her in this uh, doll size car seat. So I'm just going to use the blanket that she was delivered to me in because all of the things that she arrived in, she's going home to her mama, all of those things will be included in her boxing. Okay, let's get her. And can we see her good? Yeah. She is pretty good. Let's get you settled in here so that you look comfortable. There, that's so much better. Okay. So I've already washed her hair. And honestly, I used to come on here when I got the babies ready and I would, you know, comb their hair. This, uh, I love this little thing. This is perfect for babies because it has the comb, uh, which is a, the little teeny one here, and then this one here, and I only use it for my babies. And she has premium mohair, which is the curly variety. So when I wet her hair, she it can mold into this shape in, in this particular position. Here, and I will show you the back of her hair. I prefer if her hair, when she is going home, even though it's curly, I prefer for it to be straight. That way when I put on her cap to protect her hair, then I'm not worried about uh, it being, you know, kinky or messy. So that's what we're gonna do is we're going to put little Annie's cap on next this thing I don't want to cover up her hair yet okay let's say that to last we are gonna say that cap to last because her hair is just too cute to cover up right now all right now before we put on her socks which I found the cutest little socks we're going to put on um, this tag which is her uh, hospital tag and we'll put it on in such a way that mom won't have to unsnap it so she can just 
take it on and off. I think like this. And she doesn't have to mar. <laughs> Come on. Things that you don't want to do when you have fingernails. This is one of them. So this should go on, I think, off and on pretty easily. One more link, I think. This one, yeah. This one goes on and off easily. And just snap it into place. And now Annie has her little newborn name tag. She is ready, ready to go home. Look at the cutest socks. I found these for preemies and they fit newborns too very well because they're very stretchy and they fit her so cute. It's hard, like I said, it's hard finding clothes for uh, little preemies. So when you find something that, uh, <laughs> When you find something that fits good, you are so ecstatic. You can go on Amazon and find preemie clothes. They're kind of pricey, uh, but that is another option for mommies who are looking for the uh, right size clothes. Uh, newborns, she can probably fit a newborn diaper. I think that's what she came in, but this one fits much better. Um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to give her a feeding before she goes to her mom to get packed off. We're not going to tie it. We're just going to put that back here. And this will go home with Annie. All right. You guys see this. This is the uh, Ultra Downy Fabric Softener. This is the Cool Cotton. And this is what I use for the formula. So let's go ahead and just build um, little Annie's bottle. So she's gonna go home with this bottle. And this is her nipple. This is a latex-free nipple. I am going to leave this in the thing. <laughs> when I pack her up so that her mom is assured that it's latex free. Also, this nipple has been sealed. No, it hasn't. Okay. We're gonna have to seal that before we use it. Okay, this one has been sealed. Uh, what I do is I just take a little bit of silicone uh, cycle paint A and B, and we just fill it to, uh, no, I shouldn't say fill it, but we put it into the uh, tip of the nipple. And then I'm just going to uh, pour some of this in there. I used to add water, but like I don't add water anymore because I just, I kind of like the thickness that the uh, downy gives. Oh, and it smells so good. So should, for some reason, the silicone break down, guess what? It is not going to hurt nothing because if it should break down and silicone gets on the baby, it's gone. Your baby going to smell good. You could take a just the smallest smidge and like take a toothpick and put yellow uh, food coloring and give it more of a yellow color. Another thing about doing it this way is that it fills up in the nipple. And if it wasn't this type of colored nipple, um, it would then be very realistic looking when you're doing a role play and you're feeding your baby. So we're going to give little Annie a feeding right now. You'll notice that I am not putting the nipple in Annie's mouth. And the reason being is that anytime I put a nipple in the baby's mouth, I always put silicone gel. I'm putting the silicone gel to make it easier to slide into her mouth 
so that she can, um, it won't mar the paint. In other words, uh, I don't know how long the paint is going to last in the mouth if you keep putting things in and out of the mouth, like nipples and, uh, you know, from bottles and pacifiers. But if you use silicone, it's going to prevent a lot of abrasion and rubbing and things like that. So that's why I always use silicone in the mouth. Um, however, some people, it turns out, doesn't use silicone in the mouth and they think that that might be dangerous for a baby. So Annie's mom reached out to me and said that she preferred that I didn't use silicone in the mouth and to, uh, you know, make sure I wash it out. Uh, because with her silicone babies, she only uses uh, silicone matting powder. Now, I've never heard of using silicone matting powder for like the mouth um, because the matting powder does take away some of the gloss, which is one of the things that I like about little Annie's mouth is that it is glossed very nicely. Look at her. She look like she's enjoying that bottle. Even while she sleeps, she's enjoying that bottle. Uh, later, her mom did contact me and say, yeah, she had, because she said she had never heard of people using silicone uh, gel in the baby's mouth. Uh, but then later she contacted me and she said, I'm sorry, I have heard. Other people have said that they use it. But since she doesn't, for her other babies, and we've already given her a bath and nobody has put silicone anywhere on her body. <laughs> so no silicone gel has been placed anywhere on Annie's body. Um, so if her mom wants to do that and see how it works for her, that is going to be totally up to her because every person has their way of maintaining their dolls. And me, because I just started uh, it is right now the very beginning of July, and I only just started working with silicones in probably December of 2022. It's July of 2023, so less than, way less than a year. Uh, so I don't know everything about silicones. Uh, I can only go by my own experience and the things that I have been taught, um, when I say taught, taught by the school of YouTube, <laughs> the school of YouTube tutorials. And you guys know if you uh, watch YouTube uh, tutorials, you already know that you are going to see people do things so many different ways. Okay. Okay, baby girl. Now, how did you enjoy that little snack? Let's see if we can get a nice belch out of you. Uh, before I ever started um, painting any type of reborns, whether it was the vinyl or the silicone, I used to watch for many years, fascinated with the whole artistic, um, I guess, art artistic appearance of the art form of reborning. So that was even before I ever even thought about doing it or collecting it. I was intrigued by how realistic the dolls looked. So I really was into it years ago. And then later, as I started watching people do role plays, um, you know, I was intrigued by the idea of people interacting, how they like to interact how collectors, uh, you know, were so enthusiastic about owning these dolls and how the value of the doll wasn't always necessarily the most important thing. Like you weren't always looking for the most expensive doll. Sometimes you were just looking for a doll that resonated with you. And whether that was a dolly looking doll or a realistic doll, a realistic art doll, like the way Kit looks. Oh, I'm just reaching for this brush because it's time to put her hat on. 
um, if it was a, re a realistic doll, didn't matter because that was the doll that resonated with you. Okay, baby girl, it's time to get your little cap on and get you all ready. I don't wanna mess up her hair because I still want her hair to look so cute when her mom gets her and opens her up. <laughs> look at her, she looks like a little, okay. Y'all, did she not look like a little elf? Kit has uh, rooted, there's a little stray hair. She has rooted eyebrows, which is something that I normally don't do. And she has rooted eyelashes. Okay, baby girl, it is that time. You belched, you ate, you slept. And now it's time to get you wrapped up in the blanket that you came in. One last goodbye, baby girl.